You're listening to the Blues Radio International Podcast. This is Audrey Michelle. On Blues Radio International, it's Jesse and Audrey, and we are now taking the viral antiviral world tour to the crossroads of America, Kansas City, to our friends Daniel, Nicole, and Brandon Miller. How are you? Hey, we're great. We're doing awesome. Better now. Uh, how, how? Yeah, we're with you, man. What could be better than that? So, tell us how things are in Kansas City during the COVID nineteen lockdown. Um. Well, we we've been basically home since March fifteenth. Like literally in this apartment. Um. Our although the the state didn't have a stay at home order, our mayor. Uh, just kind of went with with all the big cities and just kind of shut them down with that. And so a lot of people thought it was really, really uh, a drastic move. But, you know, I we haven't really seen too much hysteria or anything. You know, being in the being in the Midwest, it, it kind of filters in. So it takes a while to get here. <laughs> yeah, I think it, you know, it took a, a good two week, two to three weeks to actually start getting a few cases, you know, in the Midwest compared to, you know, how bad it hit New York and Jersey and everything. It, it took two to three weeks. And, and luckily since, you know, we kind of took some of those drastic measures that we saw New York doing at the same time, you know, by the time it, it got here, it had slowed it down so much that our numbers are, are very low, luckily because of that. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, compared to every, everywhere we were, we were touring in March, you know, at the time, like, cause we were in, we did uh, Boston, Philly, New York, DC, like we, we, we were playing in our Philly show, it gotten canceled. And um, so we're like, right as we were going through, uh, we were at the end of our tour and everybody else was canceling cause they were just starting their, their tours. And we normally, we would have been touring in the late March, but we did it earlier this year and it ended up thankfully working out for us that we were able to finish our tour for the most part and get home. But, um, I think, I think be experiencing that for the first couple of weeks and then coming home and when people in, you know, in town, this is, you know, this is pretty drastic. And we were like, no, it's, we were there and it was, you know, it, cities are locking down and it's coming. So we, we kind of knew it was coming more, but, um, Thankfully, we, we don't have too many local people we know that, that have been sick and lost lost people, you know. So we, I feel fortunate in that aspect that we're all healthy and in, in good spirits. Yeah. Well, and being at the crossroads of America, you're in a great position. You can hijack a toilet paper truck or train anytime you need to. So you're in safe territory, right? <laughs> well, we are right on the track. So, I yeah. mean, there are, you know, there's like six tracks right across the street from uh, from our apartment. So, yeah. it's, uh, you know, we can get, we can hop on and get whatever we need. Yeah. And it was, it was funny, you know, we, like Danielle said, our, our second to last show of the tour we were on in Philly got canceled. So we had a night off in Philly, played our show in DC and started driving home. And we had been on the road for two and a half weeks and as we're driving home from philly on that sunday or dc on sunday we like started getting the notification the whole toilet paper craze was happening we're like what's the deal with the toilet paper (laughs) so somewhere in between dc and kansas city we both look at each other in the van and we're like do we have any toilet paper (laughs) start stop along the way and just fill the van with toilet paper and (laughs) <laughs> you know, you're gone from home for weeks. You know, it's like we definitely don't have any food, but I can't remember if we have toilet paper. It's but luckily, not something you did take a mental note of normally. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Luckily, we got home. And we had we had toilet paper. But. Yeah. So so when this is all over, though, you'll be able to open a very special museum with you know toilet paper across America. <laughs> really? We can have quite a display here. Yes, of course. Wow. Well, we I know everyone who's watching with us is saying, when are they going to play and sing? So I have to ask you what you'd like to start with today. We can't wait to hear you. Well, 
Let's do, uh, you want to do uh, Monkey? Sure. Let's do Monkey. We're going to start um, with the Big Maybell song. And I think it's, uh, it makes some sense right now because it's called One Monkey Don't Stop No Show. And it's going to be. <laughs> Maybe I should have saved it for the end. This is more of an uplifting. This is one of the more uplifting songs, but whatever. We're feeling it. We're going to go with the moment. Just what I said. I can't make you stay if you want to go. But it's high time, baby. You should know. hearted and I cry when I ran out the door see I was just a little young and simple back then <laughs> everybody knows I ain't like that no more had a hard way to go for I learned the score Yeah. 
Yeah. Hey. <laughs> What, one it. coronavirus don't stop no show, right? Yeah, right. Look at what's yeah. going on here. And I wish we could be together in person, but this is an incredible experience to be able to do this with you and uh, bring you to the world this way. Wow. That That's a, I, I know Big Maybell sang, uh, sang the song, but uh, it, Stick McGee, I think, may have been the first one to put that out. It's, uh, it's, I, it's, I, I, not sure. I, I got it from her. That's all yeah, right. I, 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 I think we <laughs> I think all know the big you know. Maybell version, but it preceded yeah. her from the 50s or something like that. But what a great song. So what's it like uh, being home with the boys this much? Because you're on the road a lot, Danielle. I am. I am. I uh, got home and for basically the first time and my Eli just turned nine. And for the first time since he's been alive, I got, I was we had I was around him for a month straight you know because not like even if we would take a couple weeks off from touring I've never been home more than a month in my professional career even even going through both of my pregnancies I never went on like leave for (laughs) for that long so um it's just it's been it's hard to feel grateful for the time because of the reason you know because so I mean so many people are sick and so many people suffering beyond the the normal struggles of life um but i'm i am grateful that i'm in a situation where i'm able to to have that time with with elijah and michael you know they're um we've been playing we've been jamming you know setting this home studio up and setting up all the microphones and cameras and stuff um the boys are just they're loving it too they're michael just he loves uh taking the mic and singing and um so it's it's bittersweet. It's very bittersweet. To, yeah. As a parent, I love it, but also as a parent, you know, I'm scared to death because everybody's getting it. How are you? <laughs> so, you know, I don't, we don't, we don't take them to the grocery store. We, you know, we limit, it's, it's, as, as a mother, it's, it's very difficult because I'm like, you know, I don't want to give in to all the hype. I consider myself to be, uh, you know, a reasonably intelligent person. But at the same time, the motherly instinct in me is like, you know, kids are getting sick. Everybody's getting sick. So to to want to protect them. But still, you know, I'm lucky that we live right by the river. And so there's a huge park. So we're still able to get outside time. And it's not so much out of the ordinary other than homeschooling. Um, And uh, and they don't go to the grocery store. You know, we don't go out. But we but that we go to the park more and we take the dogs out for, for walks and stuff and. And so we try to live as normally as we can. Mm-hmm. But the, the time the time that we've had together has been just amazing. It's so much fun. We play Uno. My four-year-old schools me in Uno. I love Uno. Uno. No mercy. Man. Kids have no mercy when you're playing Uno. I'm never teaching them Monopoly. I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> It'll bankrupt me. <laughs> yeah, it might get real. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It- Hey, I'm like, speaking already of, taking all my physical money. You can't take my game money, too. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Wow. What would you like to play next? We're going to, um, I've been, I've been digging deep and doing, uh, really, really enjoying. We're going to do some, uh, original stuff too, but, uh, I was, um, loving on Aretha Franklin's version of nighttime is the right time. And so, uh, we're going to do that. Or we're going to do my version of Aretha's version of Ray Charles' Nighttime is a Right Time. <laughs> All right, uh, phone five. Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four. You know the nighttime.
I love watching you two play acoustic together. It is just my favorite. <laughs> so you said that you he adapts very well to your face and uh oh. changes. <laughs> Aw. That's great that you give credit you know, to each other. Very well after the five years we've been six no, sixth year. We're into our sixth year now, so it's never the same. Never the same way twice. That's the way to do it though. <laughs> that's why we love live music so much because it literally is never the same ever it's one and done <laughs> well we jump and then we jump back, we jump back from standard to e flat tuning a lot and so um sometimes i'll forget what my tuning is in so i'll try and compensate for because i'll think i'm tuned to e flat so then i think i'm playing a d and then I'm in an E flat. That's kind of what just happened with that song. I was like, this seems kind of high when I'm singing it. I was like, oh. So, but he, you couldn't even tell. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. Unless you said it's something. Like, yeah, no. <laughs> it's just notes. It's got strings, so Brandon can make it fly. <laughs> that is for sure. And so, how long have you two been playing together? This is our sixth year uh, together now. Um, Danielle called me 
at the very end of 2013, beginning of 2014. Um, and she said that 2014 was going to be the last year of Trampled Underfoot. Um, and then she would embark on a solo career in 2015. So um, at that time, I, I had my own trio and we had just released a new album in 2014. So I played that year out on that album. And then um, we had done a few shows together in 2014. Um, but then we started up in 2015 um, when her EP released and then Wolf Den released later that year um, and just been going ever since. So on to six years now. Um, and seen a lot of stuff along the way, <laughs> um, you know, uh, different different makes and matches, you know, matches with the band lineup, um, but toured the world, um, you know, been to countries neither of us had been to before. Um, so that's always it's always fun to like dive into new countries where. You know, certain artists you play with, you're like, oh, I've been here several times, so this is how, you know, their culture is here. Or, you know, expect these th certain things. But whenever you get into a, a country or a culture that nobody has been to before, um, that makes it really fun and quite an experience. So, yeah.
this sweet kiss, this sweet kiss in your warm embrace. Oh, when I saw that reflection in a glass, when I held it to my lips. Looking in that glass And I saw the tears Rolling down my face mm. I cry baby babe Baby 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 Thank you for that. It's beautiful. Oh. Um, so, you know, have you had any word about getting back out onto the road? I know that you said you've been home and it's like the longest you've been back for, you know, years. Is there any um, yeah. lights at the end of this tunnel that you've been seeing or is it still cancellations and such? Um, you know, it's, you know, I've been in contact with a lot of musicians. Um, all festivals are pretty much, you know, they're just following suit. It's getting later in the year. You know, Nikoden, speaking of Norway, has just been postponed. Um, we knew it was coming to Holland Festival in June. It has also been postponed. Um, we have a visitor coming. So. Oh, come on. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, this is Etta. This is my girl, Etta. She will be 14 in November. Oh, how wonderful. Yeah. Um, but sorry, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's, uh, I, I've been texting back with a few, oh, well, she just changed all your <laughs> settings. Um, been in, in touch with a few musicians and basically all of their tours are being rescheduled for next year. And I mean, it's, I'm talking August, September, October tours. So it's, um, you know, especially the the major festivals, you know, they have to sell thousands and thousands of tickets. So even when the economy reopens and even when the orders are lifted, there are people that are still going to be really anxious about getting out there and just, you know, opening the floodgates and being around people. And it's not so much the open air activities, I think, as it is concessions and the restrooms, you know, those spaces are, you know, those are that. So I think that it's, it's just, it's, it's hard, you know, I think the, you know, we're, we haven't heard any word on our August run being moved yet. Um, but, you know, we're not exactly holding our breath at the same time. So we, there's, unfortunately, there's just no answer for that question. And it's, what's really weird is that it's, it's a delicate situation because each area has been affected differently, you know, you know, Omaha got affected differently than Manhattan. And so while Nebraska is, you know, there are states that didn't even have any stay at home orders as well because they're, they're so spread out the cases or, you know, they're just their, their officials didn't deem it necessary. And so deciding, you know, which areas we want to travel to, you know, my drummer lives in Vegas. So, you know, I don't know how eager he is to fly right now or next month or the next, you know, like it's, so it's, um, 
it's just there's no short answer. Probably not this year, honestly. And that's that's a crazy, crazy thought. You know, on a large scale, it'll be next year. Um, small pubs, though, you know, the the 100 to 300 seat capacities, which are you know reasonable. Um, they'll they'll probably be open sooner. So the smaller touring venues, but at the same time, when you're booking festivals to pay for the routing. And so you don't have those anchor shows. And so there's a lot of, a lot of musicians that can't afford the risk into new markets. And, you know, there's a lot of album releases that are being pushed back or even pondered, you know, Brandon's got a new record and it's incredible. And it's, you know, do I release it in fall when we're not sure there's touring? Do, you know, it's, it, it's just such, it's an impossible question to answer, which is really hard. Now that, you know, now that certain places are opening over the next few weeks to the month, you know, that's kind of a lot of it, you know, will will come from how it's affected when places start to reopen. You'll be able to see how how quickly, um, you know, people are going to venture out and feel comfortable in those situations, you know. So I would, I would think by the time, you know, the end of May, beginning of June – rolls around you'll see if if people are still staying home or you know they're they're how they feel about it you know because they you know it's up to the the people whether they feel comfortable if they you know aren't comfortable with it even if places are open then you know nobody's going to take that risk and you know we're not going to drive 12 hours across the country you know just to be like i hope people show up you know and they're like eh, i don't i don't know yet so um, we just we can't afford. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's literally what our lives are. But you know, <laughs> you know, so, you <laughs> oh, know it's just, uh, it depends. You know how how certain areas of the country um, how they take the reopening, you know, stages. Yeah. And all of this. Well, I noticed that you guys have done some some live streams, like you went over to Knuckleheads and you did like a virtual concert. And I think that that's fantastic. And that's what people have been doing to sort of keep themselves above water during this very bizarre time. Do you see that as being something that's sustainable for you? Like you could use that as your income stream until people do start coming back out to the shows and these bigger festivals, you know, start to rebound a little bit. I I think that's going to be the new reality for at least the rest of this year. Um, Like I said, even if the stay at home orders are lift, you know, when not, it's going to happen, you know, when, even when those are lifted, that doesn't mean that large gatherings aren't still going to be banned. So, you know, even if they're allowing 50 people into a club for, you know, it's like, you know, I'm not going to double my ticket prices simply because the venue can't allow people into the venue. So it's finding out that, that, that balance. And I think that what we did with knuckleheads, um, um, it really, it was a really interesting experience, but I think that that's kind of going to be the new reality is where you're selling tickets online and then, you know, if, if it's 50 people, the first 50 people get tickets. And I'm not, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to say that to be in that building, I'm going to charge you double. You know, I don't, I don't, I'm not a, I'm not a price gouger. I'm not like that. But, you know, what, what we've done with our live streams is partner with Knuckleheads because Frank has hired so many musicians over the years knowing that he wasn't going to make a dime, knowing that he was helping an artist break through, having, come on, I just need a gig in Kansas City. And he's like, all right, you know. And, and um, you know, he's in it for making money, like we all are. But at the same time, he's he's known for taking chances on musicians that he knows, he you know, is they're just, he's just a stopping through or something. And so I we've done the live streams that we have done have been a $10 ticket. And, and the first one we did, we went over two knuckleheads and that was before the stay at home order had come in Kansas city. And we did it, we did it socially distant and it, it was really professional. It turned out great. And yeah. I think that's kind of going to be a new yeah. reality. And the reason that we didn't do, we did our second one and in our living room, it was, you know, we're just, we're, we're trying to think of different ways to do it. We're, we're, we're experimenting differently, but the quality is all still the same. And I don't feel like 
just because we're all in a crisis that musicians shouldn't be charging for the content that they're putting out. If it's professional, it's original, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I caught a little heat for it, um, but I, you know, I'm standing, you know, 10 bucks isn't much. And, you know, it's like I said, it's helping, it's helping local musicians. It's helping my family. And the, the quality is still there. You know, we're not sitting in our, in our PJs with messy hair, you know, where I'm charging ten dollars, but it's going to be professional, and it's not. You know, it's um. It's just it, I'm. You know, we just, it's what we have to do. But we're going to be doing more, um, over over the next few weeks, probably the next few months. You know, we'll see. But I think it, what what Frank did with having the artists come to the venue, and he did it really responsibly. You know, I've I did it myself, so I know, and. It, it, it's great the way that they work the cameras and everything so but yeah I think that's the way it's going to be going and and the, the businesses that make it through this stay at home and can open up again um, you know I would just suggest that they get some good camera equipment and strong Wi-Fi because it's it's going to be like this for a while yeah absolutely <laughs> and I know that that's what we've had to do and, uh, you know, you're, you're artists, you create beautiful things and there's absolutely no reason that you should feel obligated to give that away, especially when this is your vocation. It's your job. It's what you do to your livelihood. Well, yeah. And how are you going to charge tickets when you've been doing it for free for the last six months? You know, cause eventually you're going to have to get back out there. And I think that, I think, I think everybody's just, everybody's just trying to find just trying to find their place in the world right now. And, you know, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, a lot of struggles and there, but there's also a lot of really beautiful music being created right now. And it's really, it's amazing to see some of the, some of the transformations that people are having within themselves as well, having this alone time, really learning who they are. Uh, you know, I see, and that's, that's one of the beautiful things about it too, is, seeing like the first couple of weeks it was real just real angry and being i got to stay home and then they're just being rebellious and then they're on to acceptance it's like the 12 you know the it is. stages of acceptance it, it is and now we're getting into the transformations and it's really cool seeing like i just realized that i'm really good at this and i'm finding out who i am you know and you when you're forced to be in your own self <laughs> For this long, you know, you kind of you can you can only BS yourself for so long in a situation like this. Yeah, you definitely have to keep it real, and there yeah, has been some transitions for sure. What would you like to play for us next? Um, just We're gonna do something off the wolf den. Am I stuck? No. <laughs> You should also thank your percussionist as well. I, I love it. <laughs> Man, every time I tap on the one, I'm like, what are you doing? It, is, <laughs> it adds, it's cool. It sounds good. When I pull it off, it really works great. <laughs>
is what sealed our faith. jokes to people i have the worst i have the worst jokes on like i, I don't i don't stick very well like on stage i don't like shamik is really great at telling stories um i love her show she's she's so great at telling stories and i like i i just i bomb everything i just it, it's so it's it's that's almost the i guess that's almost my thing is is bad storytelling well <laughs> this is this is a very intimate setting Let's pretend the rest of the world isn't here. It's just us and we're yeah. in your room here. So you can practice on us. So well. And, so and we we it's promise to laugh, to too. You to talk to, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, they're like wow. mom jokes. You know, there's dad jokes. You've got mom jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so... My- like our, most of them aren't really appropriate for children's ears. But. Oh, all right. Well, then own... <laughs> We've got a filter for that, so don't worry. Yeah. Uh, Brandon, you've been playing uh, 
you know, with Danielle and, and on your own in your own band. And now you're in this situation. Uh, even the things that are very familiar sound different to me. I hear lyrics. They have meanings that I didn't even know they had before this all happened. Are you experiencing any of that? And how do you see your music differently as you play together? Um, you know, it's, it's kind of any time you, you spend time with other musicians, you start to, you start to see, see things from their perspective. And you, it's like you step in their shoes, um, and you, you gain, you know, knowledge from them as well. Um, anytime I, I've played with other people for a, a long amount of time, you, you start to um, you take different different things from everybody, but you really start to show those qualities from other musicians, and you can see um, those coming out in your playing. You know, obviously, um, the style that I played for a long time was just you know a lot of guitar, and it was it was all about the guitar, um, and then just over the six years that we've played together now, it's, it's become, um, you know, about the song for me and the words and the lyrics, it's about the song and the message. And then, you know, the guitar can come after that. And as long as it's telling and portraying the same message, um, then it's all to, you know, it's all for the same purpose. And especially, um, playing with Danielle and as, as passionate as she is and emotional with how she, you know, sings and portrays the music that that's something that I've picked up over the years of playing with her, um, that I could feel that transition in my playing as well, where it's like, okay, I, I feel like I'm, you know, the solos that I'm playing. And when I sing as well, it's, it's, those things are, you know, I'm singing through my instrument, you know, just like she uses her voice to sing and her bass playing and everything. And um, everything that you play has a purpose and it's not just to fill fill space and time, you know, and make noise. Um, but I've, I've really felt that, you know, whether, it, whether it's songs that I've written and I've sang for years or new songs that come on the radio that I hear, um, you just, if you really take time to listen to them, you know, the words hit you di differently. Um, you know, there's there's been certain life events that have happened to us and other people we know, and then you hear, hear songs and you just hear them differently um, because of your experiences, you know. Um, there was, you know, we lost a good friend uh, not too long ago, and... We were on the road when it happened and we heard a song come on in a record store and and you never you could imagine what what the lyrics meant you know from what he was singing the artist and then now experiencing that you're like okay i know how that feels you know what what pain he was suffering when he wrote that song you know so um that's something that danielle has really showed me um, over the years to it's okay to show those emotions and be passionate about it and let that let that out yeah Danielle do you see the music any differently uh, going through this COVID-19 wow. shutdown <laughs> oh, sorry oh. <laughs> take a minute if you need it oh <laughs> Yeah, I think um, something that it's really hit is, um, you know, as he, he was talking about just the more of the message um, and the purpose, the purpose of the story of the song, you know, um, really just just writing more, not, not that what I'd written prior wasn't meaningful, uh, um, but as 
as what's going on, I mean, is, is affecting everybody so much. And as, you know, and I think getting older and being a mother has a lot to do with it too, but just being less, less selfish about the stories that I want to share and what my message is, you know, and how much like lyrically, you know, dealing, dealing with music as therapy more melodically and lyrically telling telling just a little bit different different story different message you know and really um deciding putting a lot more intention in in what the messages that i want to tell are rather than just selfishly dealing with love loss and issues you know what i mean um in in that aspect and i and so not to it doesn't discredit anything that i had done with wolf den or trampled underfoot or anything but that was something that i had started consciously making an effort to do with cry no more. And that was kind of how Bobby had come in with writing about my dad. And, you know, he passed away a very long time ago and it was a real chaotic situation growing up. So I, I didn't really ever write about that. So I had started making a conscious effort to do that in the cry no more songs and what message like poison the well, I didn't write that one, but I wanted to include it because I think it's a really healthy message about not poison. You know, when you, when you just live, in in sorrow and you just wallow in whatever situation you're in it's really doing more harm than good and so like you know and and being more conscious about those kinds of songs and just with the the world the way it is now i think it's more important than ever to just fill as much content of, of love and appreciation and and just positivity rather than um just dwelling on issues well, <laughs> I'll it's tell you, not, so love, yeah. appreciation, and positivity are three things that you were really giving us here today. It's very <laughs> beautiful to be spending this time with you. And, you know, what's happened in the past few minutes in this interview, very similar to what we found around the world, is that we're all more sensitive, we're more open, we're feeling things, and we certainly are appreciating the people who are important in our lives at a much different level than we did before. And it's, it's a beautiful thing that the masks are off. We don't have whatever persona we had. We're really, we're in a sense naked to the world here. And we're able to actually talk about and feel these things. And that's the most beautiful thing. Thank you for letting us be a part of that with you. It really is. It's important for everyone Truly. and all your fans. Thank you. Um, uh, is there anything musically that you feel inspired to play at this point? I know I asked for five songs. I, I left a digit out there, but, um, but <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll oh stick with God. five. Uh, what, what do you think would be the right thing now on that beautiful note? Oh, yeah, cool. yeah. It's like it just went woo. So I'm, we're trying. I'm trying to figure something out here. Having yeah, a team meeting. That's all good.
Ellen Brandon, thank you for joining us today. It's been a pleasure as always to see you, but I know that you've really brought a lot of light, a lot of happiness, a lot of comfort, and a lot of hope to people who are feeling the worst of this right now and don't see any way up. And I think you've just shown them a little pathway up that ladder, and we can't thank you enough for sharing it with us. Thank you guys for having us. Well, Thank we you love you. This as well. Okay. We're... I've been enjoying. I've been enjoying watching everything you guys have been doing as well. So thank you. For which... well, thank you. <laughs> thank we you couldn't do watching. it without oh the musicians. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you. Well, we got to get a group picture before we go here. We oh. love you. We we'll pose for it, and we'll see whether Audrey can set it up. All right. Done. There we go. Hey, we love you. Take care. And we can't wait to see you next, whether it's this way or in person. Absolutely. Hopefully we'll do this again. Love you, love you guys. Love you too. Bye. Hi there. It's Jesse. Hey, it's Audrey. From Blues Radio International. And we're here today to ask you to join us in supporting the Blues Foundation's Musicians COVID-19 Relief Fund. The Musicians COVID-19 Relief Fund helps full-time blues musicians during this pandemic. If you're a musician in need of assistance or you would like to make a contribution to this cause, please visit blues.org. Join us today in supporting the Blues Foundation's Musicians COVID-19 Relief Fund. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today for the Blues Radio International Podcast. 